This LOS is explain how the value of a European option is determined at expiration. Pricing and valuation of options. Unlike a forward futures or swap contract, an option is clearly an asset to the holder and a liability to the seller. The buyer of an option pays a sum of money called the premium and receives the right to buy a call or to sell using a put, the underlying. Gives you the right but not the obligation. The seller receives the premium and undertakes a potential obligation because the buyer has the right but not the obligation to exercise the option. Options are therefore contingent claims. Pricing the option is the same as assigning its value. Some confusion from that terminology may still arise in that an option could trade in the market for an amount that differs from its value. There are also two important exercise characteristics of options. American options allow exercise at any time up to expiration, while European options allow exercise only at expiration. It is important to understand that the terms American and European have no relationship to where the options are traded. Because of the right to exercise can be a complex feature of an option, European options are easier to understand. Okay, this slide we're just going to cover a little bit of the nomenclature because we use these symbols throughout the uh, next few learning outcome statements. So for calls, we have C0, uh, that's the value of the price of the call today. CT is the value of the price of the call at expiration. And uh, C, uh, big C0 is the value price of an American call today. And then they're using big CT is the value price of an American call at expiration. So European, they're using small c, and American, they're using big C. For puts, it's a very similar. Small p naught is the value of European put today. Small pt is the value price of European put at expiration. Big p naught is the value price of an American put today. And big p uh, t is the value of the price of an American put at expiration. Then two others here, we've got st, which is the underlying price at expiration and X is the exercise price. On the previous slide, we went through the nomenclature where small ct was the value price of a European call at expiration, ST is the underlying price at expiration, and X is the exercise price. And we needed that because we're going to start to see certain equations like this, where the value of the European call at expiration is the maximum of zero, comma, the underlying price at expiration minus the exercise price, okay? So a European call option allows the holder to buy the underlying at expiration by paying the exercise price. Therefore, exercise is only justified if the value of the underlying exceeds the exercise price. Otherwise, the holder would simply let the call expire. So let's just put in some uh, examples here. Let's see, say that the exercise price is 50. That gives you the right to buy at 50, but the price at expiration of the underlying is at 45. Well, I've got the right, but not the obligation to buy at 50. Why would I exercise my option? I would let it expire because the price is below the exercise price, okay? Now let's change that. Let's say that the underlying price at expiration is 55 and again the call gives me the right to, but not the obligation to buy and the underlying so this is ST the underlying price at expiration is uh, 55 and the exercise price is 50 I've got the right to buy at 50 well always remember with options I always say remember buy low and sell high you know with regards to the uh, call options if it's a put option buy high and sell low, okay? But for a call, you want to buy low and sell high. So I could exercise at 50, buy at 50, and sell at 55. I would exercise it. So again, don't be get too confused by the presentation of these uh, um, uh, kind of formulas. Just work it out in your mind. A call option gives you the right, but not the obligation to buy, so I want to buy low and sell high. And that's it, I think you'll get most of the questions right if you think of that general concept, okay? So again, European call option allows the holder to buy the underlying at expiration by paying the exercise price. Therefore, exercise is justified only if the value of the underlying exceeds the exercise price. Otherwise, you let the call expire. 
So the value of the call at expiration is the exercise value, which is uh, the greater of zero, or the value of the underlying minus the exercise price. So two key points here. A call option will have a higher payoff, the higher the underlying is at, ex at expiration, and a call option will have zero payoff if it expires with the underlying below the exercise price. So continuing with the European option pricing, now we're going to look at puts. And for a puts, the holder has the right to sell the underlying at X. So remember, that's the exercise price. If the underlying is worth less than X at expiration, if X is greater than ST, the underlying price at, um, at expiration, the put would be exercised and it would be worth X minus ST because it allowed the holder to avoid the loss and value of the asset of that amount. So just remember with puts, you want to uh, sell high and buy low, okay? So just think about it. I have a put that gives me the right but not the obligation to sell at 100, okay? So if the underlying is at 98, I'm going to exercise. If the underlying is at 102, I'm not going to exercise, okay? Because it's giving me the right but not the obligation to sell. So I want the underlying price at expiration to be below the exercise price, okay? Um, if the underlying is equal to or worth more than the exercise price, the put will simply expire with no value. That's correct. So the put is worth the greater of either zero or the exercise price minus the price of the underlying at expiration. So you can see 100 minus 98, it's gonna be worth uh, $2, okay? So, uh, so here we've got, again, uh, the presentation here, which I said don't be too worried about. Just think through the logic. The value uh, price of European put at expiration is the maximum of zero or the exercise price minus the underlying price at expiration. That's got to be positive. 100 minus 98, the exercise price minus the underlying, that's a positive of two. It was 100, and you're going to exercise. If it was 100 minus 105, you'd have negative 5. And so, uh, you know, the uh, underlying price at expiration is more than the exercise price. You wouldn't exercise it, okay? So uh, the value of a European put at expiration is the exercise value, which is the greater of 0, or the exercise price minus the value of the underlying. So two key points here again. A put option will have a higher payoff the lower the underlying is at expiration. Remember, sell high and buy low. And a put option will have a zero payoff if it expires with the underlying above the exercise price. So just a quick discussion on the effect of the value of the underlying. The value of the underlying is obviously a critical element in determining the value of an option. It is the uncertainty of the underlying that provides the motivation for using options. It is easy to rationalize the direction of the effect of the underlying. So a call option can be viewed as a mean of acquiring the underlying, whereas a put option can be viewed as a mean of selling the underlying. Thus, a call option is logically worth more if the underlying is worth more, and a put option is logically worth more if the underlying is worth less. The value of the underlying also forms one of the boundaries for calls. The value of a call option cannot exceed the value of the underlying. After all, a call option is only a means of acquiring the underlying. It can never give the holder more benefit than the underlying. Hence, the value of the underlying forms an upper boundary on what a call is worth. The underlying does not provide an upper or lower boundary for puts. That role is played by the exercise price as we'll see in the next section. So the value of a European uh, call option is directly related to the value of the underlying, okay? So if the underlying is going up, the value of the call goes up. And the value of a European put option is inversely related to the value of the underlying. So the, if the value of the underlying is going up, the value of the put's going down, okay? This slide is looking at the effect of the exercise price. So again, just some of the symbols, small ct equals the value price of European call at expiration. ST is the underlying price at expiration, and X is the exercise price. And small pt is the value price of European put at expiration. So the exercise value of European call is the maximum of zero, 
brackets, the underlying price at expiration minus the exercise price. So again, a call option gives me the right but not the obligation to buy. So if the uh, exercise price is 100, I've got the right to buy at 100 and the underlying price is at 105, it's going to have a value of 5. The call is in the money if the underlying price at expiration is greater than the exercise price. And the call is out of the money if the underlying price at expiration is less than the exercise price. Okay. So again, the value of European call option is inversely related to the exercise price. Now moving on to the exercise value of European put, we know it's the maximum of zero, but now it's the exercise price minus the underlying price at expiration because a put gives me the right but not the obligation to sell. Sell high, buy low. Okay, that's why the exercise price should be, must be higher than the underlying price at expiration if you're going to exercise. So the put is in the money if the underlying price at expiration is less than the exercise price and the put is out of the money if the underlying price at expiration is greater than the exercise price. So the value of a European put option is directly related to the exercise price. So we can see uh, that's nice um, material for some most likely, least likely type of uh, questions that you'd see on the CFA exam you know, in terms of directly related or inversely related, okay? So we saw that uh, the effect of the underlying and the effect of the exercise price. And uh, the intrinsic or exercise value is the amount in the money, and the options price equals the intrinsic value plus the time value, okay? Two important points, but we'll see more of that uh, in further LOSs. So we'll just finish this LOS with three practice questions to help consolidate our understanding. At expiration, a European put option will be valuable if the exercise price is A, less than the underlying price, B, equal to the underlying price, or C, greater than the underlying price. The correct answer is C. At expiration, a European put option will be valuable if the exercise price is greater than the underlying price. Okay. So here I put from the previous slide um, what you need to memorize. The exercise value of a put is the maximum of zero or exercise price minus the underlying price at expiration. We want the exercise price to be above the underlying price at expiration and the put is in money if the underlying price at expiration is below the exercise price. Now sometimes with these questions, I, it's all words, but I'm going to use some numbers, and this is what I say in my, you know, uh, tips to the CFA exam, is, is jot down some numbers. You've got some space on the page here. Think your way through it, okay? So a put option gives me the right, but not the obligation to sell. So I'm going to write sell high, you know, buy low, because that's what we want to do to make money. So if the exercise price, is, and I, I told you I, I like to use hundreds or tens or thousands, sometimes I'm doing an accounting with numerators and denominators. So I say to myself, I have the right to sell at 100. What do I want the price to be to buy? I want to buy a lower price, so I want to buy at 95, okay? So I want the exercise price to be greater than the underlying price at expiration. So this is how I'm going to solve it. I'm going to write out sell high, buy low, uh, write out a couple of numbers, 100 versus 95. And then from that, I can match up the words that it'll be valuable if the exercise price is greater than the underlying price. Okay, so European put option will be valuable, valuable at expiration if the exercise price is greater than the underlying price. The holder can uh, deliver the underlying or buy it and receive the exercise price, which is higher than the spot price. A European put option would be worthless if the exercise price was equal to or less than the underlying price. So again, these questions aren't too hard. If you think for a call, buy low and sell high, or for a put, uh, sell high and buy low, I think you'll be able to work them out. The next practice question is the value of European call option at expiration is the greater of zero or the A, value of the underlying, B, value of the underlying minus the exercise price, or C, exercise price minus the value of the underlying. B is correct. The value of a European call option expiration is the greater of zero, or the value of the underlying minus the exercise price. So remember, there's the value of the underlying, 
minus the exercise price. The exercise value of a European call, the call is in the money. If the value of the underlying at expiration is greater than the exercise price, and it's out of the money if the value of the underlying is less than the exercise price. So again, a call gives me the right, but not the obligation to buy. So I'm gonna write down a couple of numbers here. I'm gonna say I've got the right to buy at 100. Okay, that's my exercise price. And the um, price at, uh, at uh, expiration is worth 105. Well, that's value to me. I can buy it, buy, and I was gonna write down, buy low and sell high, okay? So I know I want to, I want, I've got the right to buy at 100, that's good. The, about the underlying price at expiration is 105. So there's value, which 105 is the ST minus the X, okay? That gives me the positive value. Now if I change those numbers, if I made it 95 minus 100, you'd see I'd have negative 5 ST minus X, and it would be out of the money, it would expire worthless, okay? So again, these type of questions should not be difficult. But remember, for calls, buy low, sell high. For puts, sell high, buy low. Write down the exercise price. I've got the right, but not the obligation to do something. And then compare the underlying price at expiration. For a call, you want that underlying price to be higher. For a put, you want that underlying price to be lower. It's as simple as that, okay? It's not too difficult. Some people are a little bit intimidated by the options when they get started and then they realize it's not so difficult, okay? Just, there's a fair bit of new language with it with regards to underlying price and expiration, the exercise price, sometimes uh, called the strike price, etc. okay? So B is correct, the value of a European call option expiration is the greater of zero or the value of the underlying minus the exercise price. And we've got that from our symbols here, all right? So we're just gonna finish this LOS with one last practice question. So one last quick practice question. When the price of the underlying is below the exercise price, a put option is A in the money, B at the money, or C out of the money. Okay, that one's not too difficult. When the price of the underlying is below the exercise price, a put option is A in the money. So again, what is a put? I wanna sell high and buy low, okay? Remember, it's a put option. It's giving me the right but not the obligation to sell. So I'm gonna sell high and buy low, okay? That's the exercise price, and that's the price of the underlying at expiration. So again, I'm gonna put my exercise price here at 100, and the price of the underlying is below the exercise price. Sell high, buy low, okay? Therefore, it's in the money. And we've got it here. The put is in the money if the uh, underlying price at expiration is below the exercise price. The value, exercise value of a, is a maximum of zero, and we're gonna do the exercise price minus the underlying at expiration, because again, 100 minus 95 is gonna give me plus five, that's a positive, okay? So uh, I think if you're new to um, options, this is a little bit tricky at first, perhaps, but you just have to work your way through it. And again, don't get hooked up on, the, uh, on memorizing all these uh, symbols in the nomenclature. Just think calls gives me the right, but not the obligation to buy. Puts give me the right, but not the obligation to sell. And I always want to buy low, sell high, or I want to sell high and buy low. Okay? And with that, that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.